Hello, I'm Emma Hammett and today I'm going to talk about how to help someone who has been stabbed. It is very sad that I'm having to talk about this and it's been prompted by an awful lot of recent events. Sadly, it is not unusual for somebody to have been stabbed and turn up in an ordinary residential um, situation and need help. The, the stabbings we hear about on the news are when somebody has died. Unfortunately, there are people being stabbed right now um, that with a prompt and appropriate first aid are making a full recovery, but people need to know how to help them. So I'm gonna go through step by step what to do with the help of my rather gruesome leg, so apologies for that. I'm going to just explain to you how you would stop bleeding, how you would ensure your own safety, and how you can do your very best for them and for yourself. So first of all, make sure it is safe to approach. Um, don't put yourself in any danger. If there's a, a risk that the perpetrator is still out there, stay well back and call for help. Um, hide and make sure that you are secure and it is safe. It's really important, I can't emphasize that more, more, more clearly. Um, if you happen to be with someone who needs first aid or you need first aid yourself, the priority is to um, stop any blood coming out. So that's if we're, if we're focusing on, on the bleeding. Obviously, if you've got somebody that is unconscious and not breathing, if they're not bleeding, the priority is um, to start CPR. If they are unconscious and not breathing and they are hemorrhaging at a huge rate, then the priority will be to stop the bleeding because you can't save someone if they are having a catastrophic bleed unless you are stopping that blood coming out. So really important to understand that. So with a catastrophic bleed, it is a, a, a bleed that is so severe that a huge amount of direct pressure will not stop uh, that blood. So what you should always do is wear gloves if possible. Obviously it's not always um, something that you can do, but protect yourself if at all possible. So plastic bag on your head, hands if, if possible. Um, and then what you need to do is apply direct pressure to the wound and a lot of direct pressure. Now with a stab wound, you don't know how deep it is. So um, it might look like quite a minor wound on the surface, but it could penetrate really deep down inside. So it's very difficult to stop the bleeding. You need to do whatever you can to stop the bleeding. And if you are unable to stop the bleeding, then you might need a tourniquet. So tourniquet is always, always secondary to um, applying direct pressure. So that's what you should be doing first. Now, in terms of a tourniquet, if you have a perfectly ordinary first aid kit, then you can use a triangular bandage. So one of these that you will find in an ordinary first aid kit, one of these big, big ones, the calico ones are great. The other ones are still fine um, to use with this. And you need to roll it up or fold it up. It's difficult for me to do with the leg on my lap as well, but fold it so that it, you have you know, something that is, is not too narrow that it's gonna cause damage um, to the skin when, you, when you're applying it. And you would put it on just above um, the wound. You would tie it round, okay? And then what you're going to be doing is use something as a windlass. And what a windlass does is you tie it in and then you twist, which allows you to twist it really, really, really tight. Because what you're trying to do is cut off all the blood supply to that area. So you are twisting it. I've got it. I've got a much better video on this um, on YouTube and in um, the article that I will attach below this Facebook Live, which will take you through step-by-step -step directions how to use a proper manufactured tourniquet, which is always a better option. 100% it's always a better option. If you haven't got access to that, it's one of these. And what you would be doing is you'd be twisting round, 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 tight as you can, 
the person will be screaming in agony the pain is unbelievable if you imagine um, pins and needles on steroids that's what you are doing so you're tying that off you then tie that round so that it is secure and you note the time the time that you have occluded that blood vessel now if you don't put this on tight enough you can make things worse so you do need to make sure it is tight. And once you've committed to put one of these on, please don't take it off. The paramedic, well, it won't be the paramedic, it'll be taken off in hospital um, under strict supervision. What you're doing at this point is that you're stopping the bleeding, which means that if they then need CPR, you are giving CPR very quickly um, to give them the very best chance. Um, so you're doing this fast as you can, securing it off um, and, and getting the emergency services on the way. You will tell the emergency services that you have put a tourniquet on at whatever time you put it on. If you're able to write that time on the person, that is a really good idea. Once you have occluded the blood supply, the limb will start to build up toxins. So it's really important you then don't release that tourniquet that has to be done in hospital. You've made the commitment that you're going to, um, to put the tourniquet on, so that's what you need to do now. Now that's if you have um, uh, a wound that is, is bleeding and um, that is the most appropriate way to stop the bleeding. Now sometimes you have a wound that is sort of more, um, more gaping and it's much harder to apply direct pressure now you can pack that wound so if you had something like that sort of wound apologies anyone that's squeamish what you would then do and again imagine i've got gloves on is you would put your finger in and find out where the blood is coming out so where that source is and then what you would do is get something <laughs> as clean as you've got non-fluffy material um, it could be a cotton sock it could be a, a tie um, a scarf whatever you've got I mean a scarf like this would be a fine for a tourniquet it would also be fine to pack a wound as well so you could pack it um, by finding the source and then what you are doing is you're putting it in and then you're pushing down it's easier if I show you with this so you are putting in at the source of the bleeding again imagine I'm wearing I'm wearing gloves and then you are pushing it in pushing it in each time over the source of the bleeding keeping pushing in pushing in filling up that wound and then what you can do is apply direct pressure to the wound whilst pushing on the source if that was a gaping hole you can't apply direct pressure to it um, and stop the bleeding whilst it's a hole so you are packing the wound you will put a dressing on top of that. So I've got um, a dressing here. I'm not going to put it on there, but you put a dressing over the top of that and put it on tightly and get the emergency services on, on the way. I hope that has been helpful. I hope to goodness you never need to use these skills. There is far more information on First Aid for Life and onlinefirstaid.com. And if this, this has been useful, please share it. The more people that know how to help and know how to help and do these things in an emergency, the better the chances for all of us. So stay safe out there and thank you for listening. That's Emma Hammett from First Aid for Life and onlinefirstaid.com.